Hi guys, and welcome to this life update video. I actually can't believe I'm filming this right now. It feels weird because so much of my life has changed. I feel like I'm just casually filming another video as if nothing has changed. Alex and I finally had our baby. After what feels like a very long pregnancy and a very long time of waiting, it's surreal to think that we have a baby girl living in this space with us right now. And I now have a new role and title of mom. This has definitely been the most likely life-changing event ever for us and I'm so excited to finally introduce to you guys our daughter Charlotte Joy. She's almost three weeks old and she has truly been a joy and today I want to share with you 10 things I never knew or expected about birth, postpartum. So yeah, here is my birth and postpartum update. Okay, to start with a little bit of background, my pregnancy was really rough. I had really bad nausea for the entire first trimester, basically did no work. I would just move from my bed to my couch and just stay horizontal all day. I started taking Diclectin, which is an anti-nausea medication, and that actually really helped my nausea. By second and third trimester, I was doing a lot better, but every time I would stop the medication, my nausea came right back. I actually took Diclectin all the way until the day my daughter was born. Like that morning, I took my pills just in case she wouldn't be born that day and as soon as she was born I stopped taking it all my nausea went away I gained about 35 pounds which is still within the normal range but I felt like such a different person I barely exercised I'm not normally an active person to begin with but during pregnancy like I found it hard to even go for walks like my husband would have to bribe me to go for walks overall I just felt like my muscles were wasting away I didn't feel good about myself I just wanted this baby out that was like my entire third trimester so Oh, let's get right into it 10 things I didn't expect from birth or postpartum number one induction was the very worst <laughs> I don't want to scare anyone here because people get induced all the time and I know that my experience is very personal to me there are so many factors that contribute to how your birth is gonna play out and so no two stories or experiences are the same that's just a preface I I really don't want to freak anyone out if they are planning to get induced I just did not expect induction to be that painful and fast. I was part of a high-risk clinic and this is because I had a previous loss and because we didn't know the reason for that loss, I just went to the high-risk clinic and basically that meant that I was being monitored more frequently. One of the things that they do at the high-risk clinic is they induce their patients at around week 37. By then the baby is full term anyway and it just reduces anxiety for a lot of moms. It also avoids any complications that can happen when the baby gets bigger and bigger in the womb. I had a date scheduled for my induction. When that date rolled around, I didn't feel like I was ready to go into labor or anything like that. I was 37 weeks and a few days. It was just like a regular day for me. I was scheduled to go in at 7 a.m. and what they did was put in a Foley catheter inside of me. It's a mechanical way to open up your cervix and that's like the first phase of induction. It was like a tube, a skinny tube that they stuck all the way up. They injected it with water and there were two balls that would inflate, two water balloons basically. One of them was inside the uterus. So it was like where the baby was and the other one was on the other side of the cervix. And so my cervix was still short and so the balls were very close to each other. Once that was inserted, I was just told to go back home and call the hospital when it fell out. This water balloon was just pulling down on my cervix all day. Around six hours later, it fell out while I was on the toilet. What that means is that my cervix had opened to four centimeters because the ball was around four centimeters. It slipped out, I freaked out because I saw the balls for the first time and I was like, whoa, those are huge. And I was told to just chill for a bit and show up later that night at around 9 p.m. Alex and I drove to the hospital and we knew this would be like our last drive to the hospital. They told me to actually spend a few hours just walking around the hospital to get my cervix a little bit more dilated because I wasn't having any contractions or any other signs of labor. When those few hours passed, I finally got admitted. They manually broke my water, which was very interesting. It's like they stuck a hook up in there and they just like, she broke my water and I just felt like a flood of warm liquid coming out. Kind of felt like I was peeing my pants. Still nothing. Finally, at around like 2 a.m., they injected Pitocin, which is the synthetic version of oxytocin. And this basically kickstarts contractions. And honestly, I went from zero to 100 real quick. I was having no contractions and suddenly my contractions were coming on so strong. They were like minutes and then seconds apart. Literally just boom. 
That was, I think, the most traumatizing part. It was so painful all of a sudden. I was actually hoping to get epidural later on throughout the night, but as soon as my contractions came, within the first five minutes, I was like, I need the epidural right now. So I got the epidural. Literally, as soon as it kicked in, I was told to start pushing. I think this whole event was very, very traumatizing for me and for a few weeks I couldn't really talk about it or even process it. Everything below my waist was so frozen because the epidural didn't have time to kind of like wear off a little bit. I was so frozen that I couldn't even feel myself pushing. Like I didn't know how to push and it was like all of a sudden I was being told to push because the baby was coming out so fast. I think within like 20 minutes, uh, she was out. I mean, on one hand, I'm grateful that my labor was short and that it wasn't like very prolonged. But on the other hand, I kind of wish it was like more of a natural progression. The zero to hundred thing, just like it really just put me in panic mode. The nurses were kind of panicking. Yeah, like I, I just wasn't ready to push a baby out that fast. I remember, I remember the entire time I was like doubting myself. Like Alex and I were talking the entire time and I was scared, helpless. And I just kept saying like, I don't think I can do it. And they would keep telling me to push and I was like, I don't know if I'm pushing, like, am I pushing? It was just like a crazy experience. Praise God, it ended up well. She was healthy, but I would never get induced again. Next time, I will opt to just wait until I naturally go into labor. And if there is some emergency situation where I have to get induced or receive a kick of Pitocin, I think I will just beg them to give me a C-section instead. The second thing I didn't expect was how immediately I would fall in love with my baby. As soon as she came out, they put her on my body right away. I've never experienced love at first sight. Like it was such an immediate reaction. As soon as I heard her cry and saw her, my heart just like opened up. Like I felt that immediate moment where my heart just opened up to receive her. And it was just like swelling up with love for her. It sounds so cheesy, but I know that this doesn't happen for everyone. Like for some moms, it takes them a while for them to process the fact that they're a mom or that they love their baby like it's so foreign right because you go from being not a mom to a mom within seconds Alex was crying I was crying I went from feeling absolute crap for nine months to feeling like I was on the moon it was just very surreal and I was not expecting that the third thing I wasn't expecting was how quickly Alex and I would be given the responsibility of being our baby's parents. So I know that sounds weird. So for some reason, I thought that once I moved from the birthing suite to the postpartum suite, that the nurses would kind of take care of our baby for us because we literally knew nothing. Like we knew nothing, but that didn't happen. So Charlotte was born in the middle of the night. And so when we went to our room finally, and like when the adrenaline wore off, Alex and I like fell asleep right away. We were so exhausted. We hadn't slept the night before. Breakfast came, I ate my breakfast, and we were like staring at her and adoring her. And then suddenly like the nurse walks in and she asked if we had changed her diaper. We were like, no, we didn't change her diaper. Like we, we didn't know we could change her diaper. And she was absolutely shocked that we hadn't changed her diaper. And she opens up her diaper and lo and behold, there is so much poop in her diaper. I just felt like the worst mom ever. And it's not like the nurse like was shaming us or anything. She was like, you have to change your diaper like every two to three hours. And I was like, oh, I, I like didn't know I had to do that. So yeah, I felt pretty terrible. And then she was like, did you feed her? Like, did you try feeding her? And I was like, I, did, I didn't know I had to feed her. Like, I, I have no idea how to do that. So she taught me how to feed her. There were like tiny drips of colostrum coming out and like she showed me how to like try to breastfeed her. But yeah, she's like, yeah, you should like try to feed her every two to three hours. Again, I didn't know that. So we just felt like horrible parents. After multiple attempts of trying to feed Charlotte, like I was just trying to get like little drips into her mouth. She would have like dried up milk all over her face. Alex and I didn't know that that was dried up milk. We honestly thought that was just like post-birth baby skin shedding or something. And again, like a different nurse came in and she was like, you know, you can wash her face, right? Like she has like crusty milk all over her face. Like you can just like get a towel and wipe it. Again, I didn't know I could wipe my own child's face. It really wasn't until we were like driving home and arrived to our condo that we fully felt the load of responsibility of like, wow, we are her parents. We have to take care of her. We have to advocate for her. She's ours. No one's gonna do it for us. I did not realize I had to be her mom right away. <laughs>
Okay, number four, this one's a positive one. Recovery was actually a lot better than I expected. And I think this is because I'm comparing it to my birth and my pregnancy. You know, these past few weeks, we've just been in our apartment. My mom's been coming over. We've had some close friends and family come over. Even though we're tired, it feels like such a magical time when we're all together. Alex took time off work. I had time off work. We were just soaking and savoring these days with Charlotte. I think it's just made recovery time like a bit of a happy memory for me. Yes, there are recovery pains for sure and that's going to be my next point but I would have to say having the baby here with me in my arms has reduced my anxiety so much. I was anxious throughout my entire pregnancy but now I feel a lot of relief. I also had very very low expectations with recovery. I thought it would be just like a very horrible and tiring time where I'm just like delusional and disoriented but I, I have to say I feel very clear-headed and I'm taking time to journal and process things. I've had time to read scripture it's just been like a very positive experience for me okay but with that said my next point that i was not expecting is that episiotomies are very very painful so with my birth i actually didn't have any tearing natural tearing but the doctor did have to cut me basically from my vagina towards my anus but like on an angle and i checked it out with the mirror probably one of the bravest things i've done and the incision was about this big which is a lot bigger than I thought and it's because the baby was coming out so fast she just cut me and she actually used the vacuum and she pulled Charlotte out but yeah they stitched me up they told me to take the max dose of Tylenol and Advil for however long I needed to and so I was doing that As time went on like I slowly started to feel the pain coming in despite the painkillers and it was painful <laughs> it just is so painful like lying down doesn't help sitting doesn't help standing doesn't help like there is no position where you can like reduce the pain or find comfort like it's just burning all the time once i came home i used a donut pillow for about a week and it kind of helped because it elevated my pelvic floor so that it wasn't touching like a chair or the couch it still didn't like bring much relief i am still taking tylenol and advil and when i try to reduce my dosage or skip a dose i still find that it like really hurts down there. One pro tip though, is that every time I went to the washroom or even just like multiple times throughout the day, I would wash myself down there with my shower head and then I would just lay a towel on my bed and air dry that area. Sometimes I even used my electric fan to like dry it. it only takes 5-10 minutes and i did find that that really helped relieve the pain i i really do believe that it sped up my recovery when i first looked at it it looked like a fat koi fish the area was swollen and stitched up and it it looked it honestly just looked like a thick koi fish maybe like a sardine i don't know i apologize for these comparisons and now it just looks like kind of like a little anchovy fillet so it, the swelling has gone down i think the stitches have all fallen off or dissolved but there is still things healing down there, so I am still doing my air dry thing. Number six, first poop is scary, I will give you that, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. I mean, obviously after giving birth to a child and having an episiotomy, it's very, very normal to feel anxious about your first poop because like, you know, you're like pushing something else out of your body but i normally have very very good bowel movements so my first poop actually happened in the hospital the next day and like once it's coming it's coming like you you have to go to the washroom you can't delay it and it really wasn't that bad i think the worst part was just the mental part of just preparing to push it out but it didn't really hurt and i was able to wash myself in the shower after and again like pat the area dry without it like aggravating any other part down there and when i came home i did feel anxious about my second poop uh, so i actually took some stool softeners laxatives that helped as well because everything was very very soft i do not recommend leaving your house though if you're gonna take a laxative number seven something i did not expect was how anxious i felt the first few nights i did not know newborns made so many sounds in their sleep i literally spent the first two nights not sleeping a wink she was breathing weirdly and i could hear her make all these weird sounds and i would just stare at her to make sure she was breathing everything sounded like she was choking or suffocating obviously it does not help if you read articles about SIDS. So yeah the amount of anxiety i felt around that was very unexpected scripture really helped me at this time i was trying to read a psalm a day and on the third day i read psalm 3. this is a psalm about david running away from his enemies i lie down and sleep 
I wake again because the Lord sustains me. This truth actually took away my anxiety. It was a reminder that God is the one that grants us sleep and God is the one that grants us our next breath to wake up again. And he's the one that's sustaining all life. So I really just had to trust that God was gonna keep Charlotte alive and that he would also grant me sleep as well because I needed the rest. I am still anxious with her. There's a lot of things that freak me out, but I'm realizing that every day I just have to trust God that I can't do motherhood alone. So I hope that encourages you too if you're going through something like that. Okay, number eight. Breastfeeding was both harder and easier than I thought. I know this is like a huge pain point for a lot of moms, but thankfully my milk actually came in and she started eating very well. It was very painful to get there. First few days, she was just like biting my nipple so hard that it was bleeding and it was scarring and crusted. I did not even want to look at my own body, but every two, three hours, I had to feed her again and again on these nipples that were already in so much pain. I would cry through a lot of feeds. Sometimes I would ask my sister to like pinch my arm really tight while she was latching so that I could take my mind off this pain and focus on like a different pain, which honestly is like a very toxic way to deal with pain. It was an emotional and mental battle because I wanted to be her source of food and yet like I also didn't want her to eat. Like I would dread feeding time. But eventually I was able to get a prescription nipple cream. The Jack Newman nipple cream honestly healed my boobs so fast. I 100% recommend anyone who needs it. And over time she just got better with her latching. Or maybe my nipples just grew numb. Like I don't know, but it doesn't hurt as much anymore. But another thing that was hard about breastfeeding is that after Charlotte was born and we took her home, she actually lost almost 10% of her birth weight. So Alex and I were very concerned about her gaining her weight again. And so it was very important for her to feed and for her to have healthy poops. On the second day or third day, we realized that she wasn't eating very much, also because my, my milk hadn't come in by then and she wasn't really pooping. So something I had to surrender was like, I had this idea that I was gonna exclusively breastfeed her and you know, we really didn't wanna give her formula. We were like, at this point, we have to prioritize her health and her birth weight. So we gave her formula and the funniest thing is that it was such a big deal in my head. I don't want to give my baby formula. Breast milk is king. But when we did give her a bit of formula, we researched how much we had to give. It was literally two teaspoons. We put two teaspoons of formula in a bottle and fed it to her and it was fine. It kickstarted her poos. I think we only did that twice. It really isn't a big deal. Some moms do formula and breast milk half half. Some moms actually have to do full formula. That's fine too if that's what you have to do. I was a formula baby. Praise God. Now she's drinking well from my breast. I'm also pumping using my electric pump a few times so that Alex can feed her at night through a bottle. Okay, number nine. Something I didn't expect is that newborns don't have a routine and all they do is eat and sleep. I for some reason thought that I had to develop like a routine or schedule for this girl, but nope, all she does is eat, sleeps for like an hour or two, and then gets back up to eat again. And in between that, we're like changing her diaper. She'll open her eyes and hang out with us for a few minutes, but then fall back asleep. <laughs> I think this could be really hard for moms, especially if you're breastfeeding. Literally, it feels like all you're doing is breastfeeding. I haven't slept longer than two hours in one stretch for three weeks now <laughs> because I have to pump or feed her every two, three hours. I can imagine it actually getting harder as the weeks go on and as this adrenaline wears off. Um, so pray for us. <laughs> the last Last point is about body image. Something I did not expect was how hard it was gonna be for me to accept this body and how I look. I've struggled with body image throughout my entire life. I never feel satisfied with how I look. And especially during my pregnancy, when I gained all this weight, I really struggled with it. And I was so excited to not be pregnant anymore. When the baby came out, I was actually surprised at how big my belly still was. So my belly stayed big, like, pregnant big for around three, four days. And then after that, it slowly started going down, but it's still pretty round. Like I still kind of look like I'm mid pregnancy right now. It's hard to look at myself in the mirror. I gotta say like today's the first day I put on makeup and put on some jewelry for the past three weeks. Like I've struggled to look at myself in the mirror. I've struggled with having Alex look at me, especially when I'm not wearing any clothes. My boobs are getting super saggy from all the breastfeeding. I'm unable to do exercise right now because I'm still recovering. I'm also also still like rubbing lotion and belly butter on my stretch marks because they didn't go away like I'm still dealing with all of that so it's been hard and it's something that I really need to work on I want to really learn to love my body and to feel empowered and to recognize what I did for Charlotte I'm just not mentally there yet and I'm still struggling with body image but something that really challenges me is I don't want my daughter to grow up knowing that her mother really didn't like her own body I want 
Charlotte to remember having a mom that was empowered and really comfortable and confident in her own skin. And I never want her to find her worth in how she looks. And so knowing these principles and knowing like what I want for Charlotte is something I'm reminding myself every day. Like every time I look at the mirror, I have to like actively put away those lies and those thoughts and speak truth to myself. That is my postpartum and birth update. I know it was a very long video, but I hoped it helped you in some way. I didn't mean to scare anyone <laughs> with some of my stories, but I really just wanted to share my honest experience of what I went through. I can tell that motherhood is definitely gonna be a long journey where I'm learning every day, being humbled and challenged every day. Please leave me some tips below in the comments. I would absolutely love that. Things I'm looking forward to, I'm so excited to take her to church, to go for fall walks and to be more comfortable taking her out in her stroller and to like exercise and get back into a routine again. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you very, very soon. <laughs>